Tonight, 16 trotting fillies and 18 trotting colts and geldings with two fillies will enter the track. Only 10 will have a chance at striking at harness racing's greatest prize. The other ones, nothing weird happens to them. They all, they all just go home. They don't have any shot. But who will stand to be the best match? Who will stand out among them all? Who has the best chance at finding love? We'll find out tonight here, only on Harness Land. Just started raining. How we walk away? The Hambletonian and the Hambletonian Oaks. Everyone in the sport dreams of being able to find that special someone who can bring them to the biggest stage in the entire sport of harness racing. And a lucky few are coming to East Rutherford, New Jersey this Saturday, July 30th, to try and see if they've found the one. Hambletonian Oaks brings 16 fillies together. The Hambletonian, which has a grand prize of $1 million, will have two eliminations with 18 Colts and Geldings and two fillies trying their hand at making some sort of history that only a select few have been able to achieve. Leading the charge into the Hambletonian Oaks is Fashion Schooner, a Jim Campbell trainee out of a dam whom Campbell trained to win this race back in 2009, that was being Broadway Schooner. Now she's coming out of a race where she beat three of the other main fillies to watch for through this whole series of eliminations into the final. If you watch back to this division of the Dell Miller Memorial on July 16th, Fashion Schooner took the lead and just dictated the terms most of the mile towards the finish, holding off a real fresh-legged filly who's coming in at number two on these rankings in Manon. Now I say fresh-legged because Manon only had one race at two. She came back at three and went undefeated in every race until this division of the Dell Miller, where she ends up finishing second to Fashion Schooner, still putting in a decent effort giving Chase out of the pocket though. In that Division 2, an interesting closer in Delilah Hanover has been continuously showing improvement leading up to these races and has danced all of the big dances, racing in the Reynolds, racing in the Zweig Memorial, and coming into here just giving enough chase to hold on to third and really sneak into contention. Coming out of that race with perhaps the most disappointing effort is raised by Lindy. This filly was second to Joviality in the Breeders' Crown last year, but you can also forgive the effort she put in because she was so aggressive early in the race. She made a move for the front into a quick first quarter, was giving chase into a quick first half, and then in the stretch perhaps just didn't have the, enough stamina to be able to keep up with all of the horses after making all of those moves. For her resume alone, she belongs in the conversation of horses to watch in this race, but there is a bit of a suspicion of what exactly she has in the tank after that division of the Dell Miller. If we look below the top two in the leaderboard, we have Venerable, who was the star two-year-old filly of last year. She made a million dollars as a two-year-old, won the Mohawk Million and beat the boys in the process, but then had a couple of missteps towards the end of her season, breaking stride and missing the Breeders' Crown Final, and then going down in defeat in late November in the Goldsmith Maid. But since coming back as a three-year-old, she slowly regained her momentum and enters off of a strong second place performance to Joviality in her division of the Dell Miller. Now, aside from Venerable, two other interesting fillies exit that race. One being Little Bit Alexis, who was also a bit of a spunky two-year-old in her own right, but Little Bit Alexis was incredibly headstrong in that race. And there was a point where eventually driver Dexter Dunn just let her head get the better of her and charged that filly for the front. And at that point, she, she just gave way and faltered. She has a heavy interest to race. It just seems like she hasn't been put into the right spot for her ability to be able to truly show her form against the top level. And then there's Selfie Queen. Selfie Queen possesses a ton of speed. As a two-year-old, Selfie Queen blazed the speedy hot oval of the Red Mile and even clocked a 151 mile, which for a two-year-old is still an incredibly fast race to go. 
but as a three-year-old, she had a late start to the campaign, didn't have a great debut, but was sneaky good in just keeping up with some better horses to finish third behind Joviality and Venerable. So for her speed alone, as well as the maturity she showed sitting off the speed in her last race, she's one to watch for. The other ones on this list who weren't mentioned include Baptism, who is known for her speed game coming from the Ox Fenstead stable. She's one that you can expect to be forwardly placed, maybe a victim of certain race setups, maybe not, but she's always up towards the front. She's always placed into some kind of striking spot, whether that plays to her benefit or detriment is truly up to the luck of the race. Mon Cheval is a horse who drew a lot of interest as a two-year-old. She's out of a Hambletonian Oaks finalist in Shake It Carry, but she's kind of dodged all of the big dances so far this season, racing mostly in Pennsylvania Sire Stakes and in B-grade stakes events, but performing well in her most recent mile here at the Meadowlands of the Topkins Gears. And then there's Yanaba, who showed a lot of promise early in the season, but in her last few starts has appeared to taper, or at the very least, show herself to be a slight notch below some of the other fillies in this division. Of course, coming into this Hamiltonian Oaks elimination, she has a great draw to try and show that she is more than she has shown in her last few starts. But, at the same time, there are some other fillies that have demonstrated much more speed, much more grit, and a much greater maturity to carry all of those things in the process. Now there's the Hambletonian. Last year, King of the North stamped himself as the early favorite following a decent but still tough trip for a two-year-old to overcome in winning the Peter Hout Memorial. But sitting above King of the North in the rankings are two horses who have demonstrated themselves to be potential transcendent talents in the sophomore division. One of them of all is a filly for trainer Marcus Melander and Joviality. Now Joviality is gonna try and become the third filly in the last four years as part of like this trend of super fillies coming out of the breed to win the Hambletonian. And in that become either the eighth or the ninth, uh, someone fact check that for me. Philly to win the Hambletonian at all. She's coming in off a strong performance in the Dell Miller Memorial and even beat the boys last June in winning the Yonkers Trot. The other horse who currently sits at the top of the rankings though is one that just seems like pure speed with a lot of maneuverability and that's rebuff for trainer Lucas Wallen. This guy has only raced twice this season after winning the Breeders' Crown last fall. First start uncorks up 151 and three mile from off the pace. And then in the Stanley Dancer Memorial, while losing a shoe somewhere in the race, trots a 149 and four mile, which is a time you rarely see from a trotter, let alone a three-year-old trotter. Now the only concern is that towards the end of that dancer mile, he did throw in a couple of steps, maybe from fatigue, maybe from losing the shoe. We don't know. And with just two starts under his sash this season, there is a possibility that this guy will be able to progress further from that form into something that I, I just can't even imagine. Now out of that rebuff race come three others that are worth watching for coming into the Hambletonian. Temporal Hanover was gaining ground on rebuff in the stretch there to just miss in second after being locked for a bit of the stretch. Pretender gave good chase to finish third to rebuff in Temporal Hanover, but it seems like some of the other ones in this division may have a bit more speed in their tanks than him. Fast as the wind popped onto the scene late as a two-year-old and then carried that into the start of his three-year-old season. However, in his last few starts, he started to show that he perhaps probably has a preferred way to race. Because in that Stanley Dancer race, he sat farther off the speed than he's used to and just could not finish the job when up against faster horses. So maybe this guy has started to meet his match, but that does not mean we should discount him. The rest of the Hambletonian contenders on this leaderboard exit the other division of the Stanley Dancer, where King of the North, ranked highest here, actually suffered defeat to a trotter named Slay. Slay is an intriguing horse because he's one that has one move to him, but when that one move is applied in the right place at the right time, it's vicious. He has a full opening 
to the inside of King of the North develop in the stretch to give him a straight fire shot towards the finish line and by everyone to kick home in 26 seconds to pull off that upset in the Stanley Dancer. In that race, he beat Branded by Lindy who made two moves and admittedly stalled when forced to press King of the North in the stretch. He also beat BA Superhero who has shown good speed here at the Meadowlands but was just even in that finish and maybe has a bit more to him than that line should shows and then looks like money who has just been a project horse for the tactors now has to go off of lasix just as king of the north does but that last race with the hopples applied show that maybe he's going in the right direction he has the speed he has the grit he might not be as fast as some of the other ones but he is at least trending forward coming into the first Saturday in August. And so those are our contenders for the Hambletonian and the Hambletonian Oaks, with the eliminations going on Saturday, July 30th at the Meadowlands. The Oaks Limbs go as races eight and 10, the Hambletonian Limbs go as races nine and 11. The top five finishers from each will advance to the final on Saturday, August 6th at the Meadowlands. There, for $500,000, one Oaks champion will be crowned, and for a million dollars, one Hambletonian champion will be honored. Which of these will make their way there? Which of these may stumble their way there? Which of these may be an unexpected surprise? Well, we'll just have to stay tuned for that.